Hi, Clint Coons here with Anderson Business Advisors, and in this session, I'm going to discuss how many properties you should put in each land trust you create. Because you might think that putting multiple properties into one trust is the way to go. And in fact, just this morning, I was talking to an attorney in California who made the assumption when I was explaining what I was going to do for his client that I was going to do, in fact, just that. We were going to create one land trust for all eight properties. So the attorney thought that the individual structure would look as follows. There would be one trust created just like this. So here's your land trust. And inside of it, we would have eight separate pieces of property times four. All right. Now, if you know anything about asset protection and land trust, because you've been watching my other sessions, you understand that a land trust does not provide asset protection for you. Okay? In order to get asset protection, you have to actually assign your beneficial interest to an LLC. So your LLC must own your trust. If you put eight properties in one land trust, if anything happens to any one of those properties, then all of them are put at risk. All of them are put at risk. So you've kind of defeated the purpose here. With asset protection, what we want to do is segregate out our assets. We don't want to keep all, all our properties in one basket because if one goes bad, they all go bad. So what I like to do is I like to create one trust per property. So if you had five pieces of property, I would create five trusts for you, just like this. So I'm just going to stop at three. And then we would put one property per trust, just like that. And then watch my session on naming your trust, because this also helps you at a later date remember which property is in, in, in which trust, and I'll explain that in that session. Now, each of those trusts are set up, so you have one property per trust. Then what you can do is you create limited liability companies down here. And again, I would do one LLC per trust. Generally speaking, that's how I set this up. The only deviation to this, which I'll explain, I'll explain that in a second. But generally speaking, we're going to create it like a structure like this. So if anything happens, let's say if this property right here comes under attack, then the only thing you're at risking is this one LLC together with this one property. So we've segregated our assets to the maximum ability with this type of planning. Now, Typically, that's how I'm going to recommend someone create or set up their, their structures and their land trusts and their LLCs. But on occasion, maybe you're investing in a state um, where the property values are about $35,000, dollars And so then you're considering grouping properties together. Well, in that particular situation, you could do this. You could have more than one land trust like this going into one LLC just because you feel that the equity that you have at risk here doesn't warrant uh, additional limited liability companies. For instance, the equity on this property is 40K or the value, not the equity, the value, excuse me. The value on this one's 30K and the value over here is $55,000. So you can see here at total, we have about $125,000, um, $120,000 at risk. So if we lose one, the maximum that we risk is at 125 grand. Whereas over here, if this was a $400,000 property, we definitely don't want to mix that into this structure here. Because if they attack this, they come and they attack the LLC. Whatever the LLC owns, which are these two trusts, they also get drug into that uh, if there's any recovery that is warranted under a judgment. Now, another thing to consider with this type of planning when you're doing this is that by creating one trust per property, you've also given yourself an out. And I just told you, if somebody attacked this property here, they're gonna to go to the LLC, and then they're gonna go after these two trusts over here if they get a judgment against the LLC, because the LLC owns those trusts. But, if you did this, let's say this property comes under attack. The, they're gonna run an asset search on this trust, and it only owns one property. So the only thing the creditor knows is that this trust owns one property. It's not gonna see these other two, because they're not showing up under the trust name. They have their own trust name that they're under. Now, does the creditor know what this LLC holds? Not at all, because until they get a judgment against the LLC, they're not gonna find out what it owns. 
So what happens here is if they were suing this, you could do this. You could take these land trust interests here, move them over to here, get them out of this LLC, put them over here in LLC number two. So they're no longer associated with LLC number one that's under attack. Now the only reason you're able to move this is because they're in land trust. No one will see the transfer take place. And this is something I, when I sit down with attorneys who are not experienced in the use of land trust and question why I would do this, is I tell them, you know, if I held these properties directly in the LLC's name and you sued the LLC or you sued the land trust and the, the LLC held two properties and it held a, a, a beneficial interest in the land trust, there's going to be a record of these properties being transferred over here. So an aggressive creditor attorney would come after you and say, wait a minute, you transferred these properties after the lawsuit started. Therefore, I'm going to allege that was a fraudulent transfer and we can go after them and bring them back into our LLC. Because of that record, they can discover that. If you use a land trust, they can't discover this transfer. Because when you move the land trust over, there is no recording. When these properties transferred from LLC one to LLC number two, it was via a deed. So there was something that was recorded of record. When you move the land trust beneficial interest over, it's an assignment. Watch the segment on assignments. You're assigning the beneficial interest. So that doesn't get recorded anywhere. That stays with your private documents. So no one knows about it. So by setting it up this way, one property per trust, you're giving yourself some flexibility in your planning should something go wrong in the future. And you're also giving yourself the maximum asset protection that is available. My name is Clint Coons with Anderson Business Advisors.